Welcome to Decades of Horror, the classic era. I'm sorry, I had hoped to have prepared you somewhat beforehand. This is a mutant. We've been breeding them here for ages to do menial work. Well, actually, they're similar to some of the insect life on your own planet. Larger, of course, with a higher degree of intelligence, and they can't talk. They're mute ants. I hate, I hate those noisy ants. Mute ants. This is episode 162, recorded October 8th, 2023. Gruesome Magazine. My name is Jeff Moore, and on this podcast, we cover the good, the bad, maybe even the ugly horror films released since the beginning of time through 1969. That didn't go as well as I thought it would. In each episode, we'll discuss <laughs> the monster spirits, psychos, and villains that have haunted movie going audiences since the dawn of film history. You want another take? Nah, I'm okay. good. Okay. <laughs> With me this week are my incredible co ghosts. First up is Chad Hunt co-host on Decades of Horror, the all of them, film producer, director with Wreak Havoc Productions, and a kind award of winning and writer. Director. Award winning. Award winning, yeah. Award winning. So go with that. that. Like, Let's well, go with you, that for Never mind. Uh, <laughs> how you doing, buddy? I'm, do, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm, I got, got my new setup here and, and new background. I got my... I see that. Got my uh, Terrifier painting and my Joker painting from my gal friend over at uh, Cursed Canvas Art Studios. I won them in a raffle, so Ooh. I'm happy about that. I got my Hulk, my Spider-Man, and uh, oh, and I got one other thing. <laughs> Hands. Mike, Mikey Z. Those are Hands. cool. Those are we're, actually pretty cool. We're gonna are they? Okay, I'll I'll send them to you. <laughs> You'll be getting them in the mail until later because they're not staying in this house, buddy. They go, they go like on the edge of your bed. Mm. <laughs> well, I doubt it. So if I you should... wake up and roll over, you see these hands scrawled. Yes. <laughs> now, if we could just uh, animate them, mechanize them. Nah, it's okay. <laughs> All right. Um, awesome. Also with us is Daphne, who's awesome, stupendous, and likable as hell. Daphne, how are you? Hi guys, I'm very well. I'm super excited to talk with you about this movie. Excellent. Silly but fun. Excellent. Um, <laughs> and finally, the one, the only, the omnipresent mutant. The mutant. Doc Rot. <laughs> that looked a lot bigger in real life. <laughs> <laughs> it did. I've heard that before. Um, no, I, I haven't that. actually, but that's all right. I'm do, I was doing well until that joke, and now <laughs> things are bad. Uh, no, I'm doing good. Um, it, it's kind of hard to forget this is this is a Universal Monster movie. Yeah. 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 It is? New Tans. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, wow. They're considered one of the Universal Monsters. Very cool. Well, the Metalunum. The, the, anyway. uh, the Mutant. The yeah. Mutant. The Mutant. Well, then why Not don't the, you... Get them with the universal horror things. Excuse me, I'm, I'm working something. Are out you measuring schedule. something? <laughs> <laughs> I just had to whenever there's a guy with a slide rule in the movie. Um, it's mutant. I mean, but who needs a slide rule system. when you get an interrocitor? So, Decades of Horror and Gruesome Magazine are partnering with Play Now Media on several other channels. In particular, Decades of Horror, the classic era, is on classic sci-fi movie channel, the classic horror movie channel, and the Wicked Horror TV channel. So check them out. Lots of good stuff on there. I I literally, I, I don't think people believe me, but I just, when I'm doing stuff, I pull, I just flip through and find a movie that I don't know anything about and uh, put it on and uh, about half the time they grab hold of me. <laughs> uh, and the other half of the time. With two disembodied hands. Yeah. They, is it, is it me or is it just a lot of uh, innuendo in this show? Today? Innuendo. Oh, we, we haven't even got there yet. Um, so anyway, our topic this episode is this island Earth. 
And man, do we have effects on this movie. This movie is so full of effects. So this thing, I don't remember what this thing is. This is called like the uh, mm -hmm. Master mm -hmm. Control or something like that. Um, anyway, lots of pretty lights. <laughs> Released in 1955, directed by Joseph M. Newman. Written by Franklin Cohen and George Callahan as Edward G. O'Callahan. Yeah, see? <laughs> from a novel <laughs> by Raymond F. Jones. And actually, it was a, a three part series in, uh, I want to say Amazing Stories, but as it always is when I just talk off the top of my head, I'm probably wrong. Um, Thrilling Wonder Stories magazine. Yes. So, uh, and then released as a novel. So, um, Cast, the cast includes Rex Reason, Faith Demurg, Jeff Morrow, Russell Johnson, Lance Fuller, Robert Nichols, Douglas Spencer, and Orangey. This is not our first movie that includes Orangey either. No, it's not. Oh, the cat. Yes. <laughs> and I just, I got to say before we go any farther, Neutron, they call the cat Neutron, and it's because he's so he's positive. positive. I'm like, wait, are you a yep. scientist? Neutrons <laughs> are not positive. Protons are positive. Yep. <sighs> I caught that too. <laughs> Which remind me of a friend's favorite thing. Uh, Proton mm -hmm. walked into a bar and asked for a beer. The bartender said, are you positive? Okay. <laughs> It was supposed to did, be irony. Did I tell that joke? In the <laughs> I don't. Did they? I don't know. Uh, was that before or after the toothbrush line? So the production company is Universal <laughs> International Pictures. It was filmed at Universal Studios, uh, Mount Wilson, California, Metropolitan Airport, or the Van Nuys Airport in L.A. Uh, not at the Washington, D.C. airport, despite what you might think. Um, filming dates, January 30th to March 22nd, 1954. Release date, there was a New York City premiere on June 10th, 1955, and a countrywide release on June 15th, 1955. The budget is an estimated $800,000. And, oh, this is one of those movies where who the hell knows what really happened. Uh, <laughs> domestic box office was $1.7 uh, on Wikipedia, and they resource that from the January 25th, 1956 issue of Variety Weekly. Ultimate Movie Ranking says 4.9 million. So I don't know. Maybe the 1.7 million is uh, rentals. That would that would factor out about right. But anyway, not great considering the, the budget. Uh, synopsis: Aliens come to Earth seeking scientists to help them in their war. That's true. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So this one <laughs> is Chad's pick. Zoom in there. So let's go, buddy boy. <laughs> By the way, that uh, Terrifier 2, that is that something you did or is that something you? Uh, no, that's my friend Tiffany. Oh, okay. Sure. At, at, at the art studio. And she did that one and the Joker. And the Joker, those are pretty yeah, cool. Well, I, I thought they were the cool. same style. But, uh, yeah, she, uh, nice. you know, she had a raffle for them, and I, I won both of them. So, I was happy about that because I, I think she's an amazing artist. And so, very cool, very cool. Well, what was the question what you, again? Uh, what do you think of uh, this island Earth? Um, you picked it. Yeah. Now I'm trying to remember why I picked it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know why you picked it. I like this movie a lot. It had <laughs> good actors. No, uh, this has always been a favorite of mine uh, since I saw it as a kid. And as a kid, I hated the Metaluna mutant. <laughs> I, I just thought, I just thought, man, that thing is just so creepy and, and nasty looking with its big brain and, and and stuff like that bulging out of the top and and. Uh, I just couldn't stand it. It just gave me nightmares as a kid. Um, but I was like, and when I saw it as a kid, I was confused a lot by it because I, you know, we had the, uh, 
the Metalunian, Metalunians or whatever, how, the Metalunios. <laughs> that sounds like a breakfast cereal. But whatever they were, I was like, they were walking around with these big, giant, bulgy foreheads and the big this little spit curl at the top. And I was like, does nobody notice this? They're all walking around like, uh, this is nothing. This is no big deal. And uh, uh and then, you know, as, as I grew older and watched it, I realized what was going on. I, I didn't quite get it as a kid. But, yeah, it's 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 one of my favorite, like, universal sci-fi movies. And, and because it is a universal and I'm a universal fan, you know, it, it's it's right in there with the rest, rest of my love for universal uh, movies. So, yeah, I, I, it, I, I've always enjoyed it. I like it. I love it. Uh, I, I love it for the fact that there's some actors from the thing in another world in it and um, which is, you know, another one of my absolute favorites. And yeah, so I still like it. I still like it. Cool. Cool. I'm glad you picked it. Yeah. Uh, so, Doctor. Oh, when did you first <laughs> see this and what are your impressions now? Well, okay, like... Chad, I'm also a Universal fan. If you can't figure that out, <laughs> um, and uh, this has always been the weird Universal movie because the mutant gets lumped in, but they rarely ever put the whole movie in the in the group. It's really strange. Mm -hmm. uh, they just kind of focus on the on the mutant itself. But at the same time, yeah, I saw this early. Um, it's it's. It's never been one of my favorites, though. I'm sorry, Chad. <laughs> I love the mutant. Uh, of course, we don't get them until you know the finale. But watching it this go around, I found a lot more interesting things in the first seventy-five percent of the film <laughs> that actually amused me. Uh, so I actually warmed up to it this go around much more. Good. Yeah, this has always been one of the like oh yeah design on earth that's included oh yeah um but no i'm glad you picked it because i needed to rewatch this movie and it's um it's much better than i remembered like you said saw it when a kid um probably a couple times and never really got it um but yeah there's there's a lot of well it also <laughs> there's some interesting things happening, you know, due to its age that I'm sure we'll get into that like, oh, <laughs> that's not right. Don't say that. Um, but <laughs> it's with most of these movies, but, uh, and also of course doing, uh, you know, these, uh, these podcasts uh, for the past, what decade, you know, know a lot more about the actors and stuff that are going in behind it. And uh, that makes it more interesting as well. So yeah, Chad, you won me over, bud. I still all righty good uh, and now for daphne i'm interested in well i think daphne. i saw it with her I being think a I... woman and all yeah no, <laughs> no. as a woman i found it <laughs> how was that yeah, destination as a woman <laughs> as a woman i found it um I, th I, I think i saw it as a kid but um i because i remember parts of it especially the scene in the airplane when um you know, when he's just sitting there by himself in that chair in the mm -hmm. airplane. Um, but I'm, I've seen it a couple of times on MST3K. And after that, I looked for it again to watch the, um, just watch the movie on its own. And I didn't know it was, a, I didn't really put together that it was a universal monster movie, but that makes a lot of sense. Cause as soon as I saw the monster, I was like, oh yeah, that's like an iconic in, you know, an influential monster, and I didn't put it together that he's an Ian Rose monster, so that's really cool. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun. I love Rex and his deep voice and his broad shoulders and his hero protagonist thing, and um, and the yes, the the white haired quaff, the right quaff with the white eyebrows. I was really hoping I could find some white paint or something to do my eyebrows with, but um. Oh, that would yeah, awesome. I thought it was I thought it was a lot of fun. And I liked seeing the professor, of course. And then I kept trying to figure out where do I have where have I seen these guys? And then it was the third creature movie, right? The third. Uh, yes. Black creature Lagoon. Wars Among Us, yes. Um, 
yeah and so just yeah it was a lot of fun i liked it <laughs> yes rec reason rec reason and rec jeff reason. were in the creature walks <laughs> among us uh, and Russell Another Johnson movie. was in It Came From Outer Space. Mm -hmm. Crab Monsters. Crab Monsters. Crab Monsters. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Along so with anyway. Beach. What was that guy's name? Beach Dickerson. Beach Dickerson. <laughs> Rex Reason, Beach Dickerson. <laughs> what kind of names Rex calling kids in the 50s? Well, I, I think know. the guy that named Rex Reason, I, I didn't look to see if that was his real name. Maybe somebody can look that up, but... I figured well, that had, was a, something like Rory Calhoun or Tab Hunter or. Rock well, but Hudson. he has a brother. I think I. I think I. We talked about this. Before. Oh, you did say something about yeah, that. Yeah, he has a brother named. Because I was like, oh wow, this is quite a name. Um, so it's Rex Reason and his brother Rhodes Reason. All right. <laughs> and his sister, Rhodes. no, no better. No better, no better. reason. <laughs> Don't forget her. I'm, I she can't never started. As a woman, she has a lot. Oh, of it's things. one of those families yeah. where they named everybody with the same <laughs> he, initials. Same for, he he did do two films years under years another name, though. Um, oh, did he? Yeah, he did. It was under anyway, Bart Roberts. Uh, so we're joking. Bart. What we're we're joking about the uh, and it wasn't even a it wasn't even an American. It was the alien that was misogynistic. <laughs> uh, Out of nowhere, right? This, because right. of yeah. Uh, Surely, with you being these? a woman, you'd be curious as to our destination. <laughs> Not as a scientist. As scientists, at least, huh? teach him. Ruth, don't tell me that as a woman. You're not curious about our destination. <laughs> that was funny. Oh, dear. Well, anyway, how did you say that? Yes. But, <laughs> I'm glad you picked this, Chad, because I know I watched this. I watched this before, but I think I must not have been paying much attention because all my main image of it was the guys in the with the high foreheads and the the white cotton candy hair and the, mm -hmm. um just seeming Ooh, stupid and how candy. could they not recognize those guys and then and being ticked off that the the mutant wasn't didn't play a bigger part you know even mm -hmm. though that was the iconic image rolling that in at the last takes. five minutes of the movie uh, right. but just just out of nowhere too just I know. Kind of, yeah. Oh, don't worry. Right. It's oh. just a mutant. Sorry, sorry. I was sweeping the floor. I, I meant to tell you about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <sighs> I meant to tell you about this before. Anyway, uh, and that was, it was a last minute addition to the movie, so we could we could talk about that later. But I what I found out now is what a landmark movie it was in terms of special effects and how it depicted space and on the planet Metaluna and, and all these other things. So we get about, uh, what well, it's, what is it about, uh, 85 minutes. The first like 50 minutes is on earth before they take off. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I, I think it's way better when they take off. I love this stuff in yeah, space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, anyway, it was great uh, because they have where they would usually have a black tarp with holes punched in it and shine mm -hmm. a light. This one mm -hmm. had really, it looked like cool space travel, you know. Star fields were moving along with everything else. So it was, yeah, they the uh, was it cheap? <laughs> exactly. And you said the word star fields. They said that uh, I think it was like the first movie that had these stars at different depths in the background that mm -hmm. moved in relation to each other, not just from the the ship moving. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. And there's lots of lots of other good stuff there, but I really did like the. Uh, the special effects, especially after I kind of learned about because you look at it now and some of that stuff it would be really easy to do, but it was a heck of a lot of work back then, and some of it was very innovative. Even even the saucer was pretty mm -hmm. uh, pretty unique. So mm -hmm. now that we've had first impressions, stop doing that. <laughs> I'm trying to help. I feel like one of those little puzzles you slide the pieces around on the little square. Yeah, except someone else is sliding them in different directions in the background. <laughs> anyway. It is now time for. Wait a minute. I don't want it to. Okay. It's wow. now time more than one. for. Taglines with Chad. Nice. Is it really? It mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> 
Taglines. <laughs> These are good ones this time. <laughs> Taglines for this island earth are as follows. The supreme excitement of our time. <laughs> Don't sound so excited. I was supremely excited. I was. Trapped amid the mysteries of outer space, they challenge the unearthly furies of a planet gone mad. Planet gone mad? Unearthly furies? Unearthly furies. Mysteries. Ladies and furries. gentlemen, the mysteries unearthly furry. furries. Ooh, a mystery <laughs> shape. <laughs> Two mortals trapped in outer space, challenging the unearthly furies once again of an outlaw planet gone mad. So this time Ooh, we an have outlaw planet, yeah. Two mortals trapped at an outlaw planet, yeah. Yeah, and we're playing like that there. outlaw. We're, we're trying different things. I like the way they changed that up a little bit. It gave it a whole new meaning. <laughs> Two and a half years in the making to bring you sights of fantastic amazement, never before possible on the motion picture screen. Wow! Wow! It really took two and a half years. Is that real? Mm. It did. You're asking the wrong wow. guy. Never before possible on the motion picture screen. Mm. Yeah. Possible. Right. It's pronounced possibly. Possibly. <laughs> and that's been taglines with Chad. I can't help it. I have a can stuck in my head, so <laughs> <laughs> I say things that I wouldn't normally say. All right. What do you guys want to talk about first? I want to talk about this pain in my lower back. Yeah. What the about, doctors can't help let's me. Let's do the posters. Let's do let's the posters. Do the posters. Oh. Oh. oh, geez, with the posters again. What, what about what? my back, uh. damn it? What, what are the posters is gone now oh, no. again? Bring it back. Bring it back. I'm bringing it back. God, I get so irritated. And are you doing that, Doc? You're doing that, aren't you? No, I'm no, sir. It. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. It'd be funny, but um, I'm not right. Right. <laughs> So, in another podcast, we talked about this gentleman. Uh, this is kind of the main poster. Uh, according to IMDb, which we have learned is extremely unreliable, this is a, <laughs> a rental Brown poster. Hmm. So we talked about him on 70s, was it? Or was Probably. it 80s? Chad, do you remember? I don't know. <laughs> These anyway. things all run together to me. I don't yeah. know. I remember talking about it. So it must have been on the seventies. Must have been seventies. Uh, yeah, and and as I show some of these other posters, you'll see little pieces of this reproduced in different, you know, flipped, horizontal, shaded, all kinds of other little colors to it. So I like it. Got a big explosion. Mm -hmm. Little tiny, little tiny mutant there in the lower right corner. Mutant, are you done in here? I need to sweep. Grabbing a woman, chasing a woman. Yeah. Wow. The little um, hollow decks or the little uh, transporter things happening down there. Oh, that's right. That's right. They're on there. And the uh, earth in the background. Oh, the way the hands go. <laughs> yeah, no, I like that. <laughs> it's magnetized. What yeah, it was that? Which was again familiar. made me go. Magnified hands only. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wouldn't their feet go full? <laughs> John Claude Van Damming it and all that. Oh, no. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Uh, that's a couple of uh, lobby cards, I guess. Um, mm. Pretty much the same stuff, just kind of put different arrangement, although the lower one has different artwork. Uh, so many words. I, I well, definitely would it, want to see this you, movie. You have to remember that it was a big deal to be in color, I think. Yeah. Like maybe War of the Worlds might have been the main color one before this. Mm. Without digging it up. Technicolor. It's true. It's true. Uh, the comic book. Uh, this yes. one's quite different. I like mm -hmm. this one. Yeah. Oh, Rex. We had a little bigger <laughs> metal in there. 
Well, it's interesting in this movie, and uh, I'm not going to ask Daphne what she thinks. But well, she's a scientist, and she's like a preeminent scientist in whatever it is her specialty. Top of her field, is. yeah. I don't know. They're dressed like uh, water but, treatment. But she doesn't get to do a whole lot of scientizing, and she's not. No. She she doesn't do much when it comes to. Well, it's not much to do, really. They're just kind of along for the ride, aren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she does. She does run away from the mutant. Well, as a um, woman, I'm sure that there's things that come up. <laughs> and then, and then when Rex sees her, I his name's not Rex in the movie, but it's all about like the lake and being in a what? What was all that yeah. about in the backstory? Vermont, something in Vermont. And... Yeah. they'd been to some uh, conference together yes. and then took an extra day to go play in the lake somewhere. Drink, drink maple sounds, syrup. It's like. That, Which really? she claimed not to be able to remember. <laughs> yeah, he didn't like that. I feel like that <laughs> and now we have the Ooh. ever creative German posters. The superhero uh, I, Metal Luna. I, I oh, wow. Look at that. I, I didn't go through the, uh, the oh, AKAs. No. This is another one where there wasn't enough room on the thing. Because it, everybody and their mother tried to change the title of this movie away from this island Earth. Because they they just thought it was too artsy and people weren't going to get it. It wasn't going to draw kids. Uh, but the the director who had money, he brought the project in. He insisted on it. So it's a great um, title. I mean, I think that the. I mean, maybe not for a movie. Maybe that's what they're saying. But I I really liked the title. Yeah, you know, they yeah. called it that. What they were getting at with it. I know they didn't really spend a lot of time on it. But so, I think it's a good uh, well, title. how about this? The reissue title was Bloodlust in Outer Space. Oh, no, nice. Bloodlust. <laughs> I don't that's know where a, the that's Bloodlust That's a good was. title, but it makes and it I a think, less uh, than apply to this movie. <laughs> War Between the Planets was was one they wanted him to do, or something like that. War of the Planets, which would have that would have got people there. Yeah. What do you um, think of that color scheme there, Chad, on that metal I was, was saying it tank. looks like a, a super villain from a Superman comic or something. Doesn't it? And I don't I, know. Where I they... really like that one, the bottom one with the four. Yeah, yeah. yeah I really like it, that one. That's creative. Well, what's kind of neat is notice how the the border is yellow on one side and red on the other mm -hmm. side of the. I can't. I can't keep saying mutant. I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> the mutant. It's easy. Uh, this is a mutant. Metaluna four and and what it ne, which is uh, translates to, Metaluna four doesn't respond. Oh, sure. Okay. It <laughs> anyway, so yeah, the, the poster on the bottom's got the really, really brightly colored mm -hmm. uh, mutant front and center. Not much else on there. Whereas the one one above that is more mm -hmm. traditional flying yes. saucer and the Does two. Does not look like. Oh. What he actually looks like at all. I swear that looked a lot bigger. Well, it's not the right color, but. <laughs> <laughs> anyway um so this one i'll be darned if i can figure out survive a tank there's I, new tanks and then there's survive a tank <laughs> i put that title in google translate and whether i chose french or spanish it gave me the same translation <laughs> i'm like wait a minute so I'm, I'm the survivors of infinity. That's it what made I me think it was uh, Spanish yeah. <laughs> because at the top it says uh, uh, Universal something Universal Films SA, and that they usually have that SA on uh, Mexican films. I always thought it meant South America or something, but maybe it's that's not it. But um, let's it says France uh, where I looked it up on uh, in IMDb. So. Is it Les Survivants the Infinite? Le Infinite? The, the, I can't. The Infinite. I can't speak with a French accent unless I. <laughs> I think the, le, le, the L in the front is the, and then the end. Maybe. But that's kind of cool. Survivors they got the, of the Infinite. They got the plane beaming up to the thing. And mm -hmm. That's a little different. And now, now for the good one the Swedish <gasps> one. This one is in the film and the farg, <laughs> which means a film in color, <laughs> and Rimden's oh. the motor, which sounds vaguely dirty. I don't know, like 
Maybe the part. title of a 70s porn <laughs> film, since I'm getting labeled as uh, yeah, it, it doesn't Brendan's really mean, Demoner. Yeah. It does sound kind of like a well demoner. Yeah. But it's kind of cool. Yeah. I like the I like the purple. That's, Demoner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Rimdens. Yeah, got the Universal International thing there. Rimdens. Flying Rimdens. saucer. Rimdens. All right. Uh and I think I don't know if this is French. I'm 12 Terror years old. The universe. Terror sur le universe. I don't know. So anyway. <laughs> I oh, I, you know, it mind. might be uh, both of these titles translated as French, but I thought this might, you know how we run into the ones from, uh, is it Belgium? Mm-hmm. Where they have French and... Uh, Flemish. Flemish. Mm-hmm. Is that yeah. the yeah. Arthur down there in the right-hand corner? <laughs> no! Ah. I know. Oh my god. <laughs> what are you people doing on my planet? <laughs> they even got the Zargon ships up there too. Mm-hmm. All right, now <laughs> the piece de resistance. The Italian ones and the, the, the Italian okay. title is the the, Dino the next... Dello Spazio. So <laughs> Spazio? <laughs> Spazio, which means uh, Spazio. Spazio. what does it mean? Spazio. Citizen of space, citizen mm. of space. So, but that's not that's not the the best. Here's the best one. That one's just like a weird montage with really bland. I know he's got he's got quite the Superman pose at the top yeah. though. He does, doesn't he? You know, it stands okay. for hope. <laughs> But here's the best one. <laughs> Chad does oh, oh, no. <laughs> wow. Where did he get that outfit it doesn't from? doesn't even. I don't know. <laughs> it looks like, like Robbie what the Robot without happening? being Robbie the Robot. Yeah. Warning, warning. <laughs> this is like a little guy in sitting in a, at the controls at the top. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like one of those things where you used to get the little stickers and you would stick them on the thing. And yeah. Like, yeah. it just grabs the and sticker the... from the little guy's head and Plopped yeah, they stuck it on there. Yeah. And there's no there's no rockets or ships like that anywhere in the movie either. So nothing on this is in the movie. <laughs> well, Except maybe. the white hair. I guess the white hair. Maybe. Maybe the rockets were the things that were guiding the little meteors. Yeah, they didn't look like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> they, but they, they were, were so tiny. Well, maybe there that was go. Cal's uh um airplane in the beginning. I don't know. Mm. I, I'm reaching. I'm reaching for trying to get yes, trying to are. help him out there. <laughs> It's bad. All right. Well, I don't know. Just just jump in anytime here. These are our leads. We have uh, Rex Reason on the top, Faith Demurg, and Russell Johnson in the middle picture, and then all three of them in the bottom. And uh, Rex is the new guy. Snarly. Uh, he plays the uh, arrogant uh, mm-hmm. smirk on his face. There, he does. Rex Reason is Doctor Cal Meacham. Yes, Dr. Go on, Cal step over that done. line. <laughs> um, who the heck? Oh, and Rus- Russell Johnson is Dr. Mm-hmm. Steve Carlson. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, and and when when uh, Dr. Meacham gets there, uh, Ruth and uh, Steve. I just can't. It's Russell and Professor Faith. Steve. Professor uh, Steve. They're like sneaking around whispering to each other all the time. Like they don't know if they can trust him or not, which is why they think, I, I don't know. And finally he asks them to come do something with him. And then when he gets in there, he goes, all right, let's spill the beans. Yeah. What's going yeah. on here? Here, we'll put this lead thing in front so they right. can't hear us. Next thing you know, yeah. they're listening to every word they say. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't have a very good idea of how well that thing worked. I know you're um, all a very uh, well-known and, and intelligent scientists, but I know much better, and I'm yeah. going to yeah. <laughs> slide yeah. this lead lead block in front of me. He's going to die from lead poisoning. I, yeah, in five I, years. I think neutrons are positive, and uh, lead can block the interocitor from the alien. And nobody says this guy is an alien, even though he's got a forehead like an exactly that's what i'm saying they're just walking around like they're one of us or well that photo in the middle i think is the i don't know if that was a conversation but i definitely heard them say to each other did you notice the forehead there's a little bit of a there's a some sort of dentate in it (laughs) oh when they had the little drawing drawing and they go (laughs) 
Notice the. Really? It's like you don't. Yeah, I noticed. The the <laughs> and these are the smartest people in the planet. All right. it, and he must be real smart. His head's big. The lead alien uh, is Big Head, starring Jeff Morrow as yeah. Exeter, who kind of Dr. Meacham keeps though. calling him Mr. Exeter at first. Uh, Mr. Exeter. No, no, it's um, just Exeter, my friend. So there, uh, there, there he is with uh, Ruth. Yeah, why they Cal. all turn purple at one at one point? Yeah, he's got some well, they, going on the there. planet. I think I think the idea was the planet uh, Metaluna had different suns, and so they did that to, mm-hmm. you know. I just thought they couldn't breathe. Well, there's that too. When you guys were talking about how uh, it kind of kind of got cooler when they got in space, I agree, and I really like a lot of the colors. It reminded me a little bit of uh, of Planet of the Vampires, um, mm. just in just mm-hmm. in like the color scheme. It had yeah. like, cool uh, colors and um, uh, some of the matte paint- paintings of the planets. I thought were really cool, um, and I loved the the. Um, like the surface of the planet, how it was all like pock holes and mm-hmm. you could, it looked like, like you could Swiss go cheese. through underneath. Yeah. Like Swiss <laughs> cheese and you could see the different layers. I thought that was fun. And I love the idea of their enemy. Yeah. Their enemy um, using asteroids yeah, that, was, or whatever as, as weapons. I thought that was a really cool idea. Well, and one of the thing I just, one of the things I discovered is different transfers of this on DVDs and Blu-rays and whatever come out totally different so oh, okay. like the one on the top looks really uh-huh. kind of blue tinted where the uh-huh. next one down is is not but uh-huh. yeah it was like a the the surface of the planet had been decimated and uh-huh. so they built their cities like in a layer underneath uh-huh. and sort of like in the catacombs and i've got i know it's kind of hard to see that one uh but that's a great map yeah i yeah, love that map. i love it yeah and the ship comes in and lands on that little uh-huh mushroom looking thing on the right mm-hmm. uh with the green other, light comes on when they lower yeah the they go down the, the elevator and there was a, a scene when you saw the explosions up like in the upper left yeah. hand corner and that was in there i just think that's gorgeous they i love the colors about, uh in the commentary they talked about how really complicated you know when you get the people walking out there and mm-hmm. explosions going on how many different layers of uh, there were for the uh, what, what is the process? Photo printer, um, photo uh, rotoscope. Uh, no, well that and uh, uh, God, what was it? Ralph showed us that. Somebody showed us one a printer. Yeah, I'll think of it in a minute. But anyway, yeah, because they had explosions up front, they had mm-hmm. explosions in the back, in yep. between, and it was all cool. I mean, yeah. I don't know who these guys were, but they made great explosions. And when they were walking from where the spaceship landed over to that entrance way, that yeah. looked really good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they look at that tunnel and go, mm-hmm. all the way back up. Yeah. Oh, that, that is so sci fi. One of the uh-huh. things they said, I, I couldn't find a picture of it, but that little car they got in, uh huh. that was left over from, uh, I think it was Abbott Costello. Go to Mars. No, my God, that's oh. so awesome. Yay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I that's love that. wonderful. Well, was it double right. build with an Abbott and Costello? Oh, Maybe it was I'm thinking double build of something with, else. A, with a lot of stuff. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, uh, so we had those. Uh, just to mention, I'm not going to go into a full big thing like I usually do, but these are kind of <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the character actors here. Uh, on the top, the guy behind... Uh, Rex Reason is Robert Nichols. That was his golly, golly G comic relief, you know, while they yeah. were he was in the thing in Terrasseter. Oh, he was is in he? the thing? Is yeah. he? And there's Scotty down there at the bottom. Yeah. And the one on the bottom is Douglas Spencer, who was Scotty mm-hmm. in the thing, the, the mm-hmm. newspaper writer that does the Watch the Skies monologue at the end. Hard to recognize, but that, that was him. Man, they, they just they just can't figure out that these people are aliens. Look at that <laughs> head on that thing. They just they and you can't tell the things. other one very good, but Exeter's right hand man, Brack. 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 Hey. He made by Lance Fuller, and he was he was always, you know, off his right hand, giving a disapproving look. Yes. 
you know, Exeter was just being too. I think soft. of Brack from Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Uh, I love that they're looking at the catalog. I I thought it was oh, so yeah, cool, yeah. just this how they introduced the equipment. It just like showed up, and the fact that the pages in that catalog were metal. It was just I don't know, and it made a it little. Was, it yeah. sounded like tin foil when they were moving it. It was just I don't know. I love that kind well, of was, old stuff. Yeah, and it, and it was cool in that. Uh, I, I should have pulled some of those pictures up. I didn't, I, I at some point went, Jeff, enough's enough. But <laughs> pictures of them with these crates all over the room and they're mm -hmm. screwing stuff together. And yeah. The, oh, and when they have to put the thing together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, you're, you're, <laughs> yeah, and that you thing. Did it. You put it together. Oh, by the way, by the way, he is on, uh, in the bottom picture there, he's on the interocitor. Interocity. The, the uh, triangular uh, video screen. Didn't they say there was like oh, 2,000 pieces or something like that? I don't uh, yeah. yeah, there but, were thousands. There's a few thousands, I think. <laughs> they use that again in something, too. They use those crates, and I can't remember what the guy said. It was some totally disconnected movie that had nothing to do. It wasn't science fiction or nothing. But it was somebody who was getting attacked in an alley, and they, they get thrown into some crates. And they said, if you look at those crates, you can see the company name. It's the, oh my gosh! The name on the so you knew it came from this. Oh, that's oh, cool! Hilarious. Now the middle picture too, where they're on these super comfy space seats that have <laughs> have this sharp thing coming out for your. I guess you're supposed to hang your butt on it, or the ergonomic the small of your back. Yes. I don't know. Place very... your butt here, re here. Rest on these. It's been a tough journey. Well, it does <laughs> kind of ease you back a little bit. Uh, yeah. Just keeps you from Rest sliding down. down. <laughs> All right, here's the uh, interocitor when they have it done, and they're talking to Exeter. And that's you that call little it magic. Depository? Uh, yeah, that thing is is something else. It looks like a car fuse with a with a you know, like they drilled a hole in a red bead and slid it over. Mm -hmm. but, but mm -hmm. Oh, it sure does. It? Uh, Couldn't cut it with a diamond cutter. It was cool. It was another <laughs> cool thing. It just looked, you know, mm -hmm. it's neat to me how they could take sort of everyday stuff and make it look science fiction-y, mm -hmm. I guess. How Star Wars are. Who would have thought <laughs> 70 years in the future we'd have Blu-rays and stuff and we'd take a closer look at this and it's like, that's mm. just a car cube. Oh. <laughs> Did you see the wires? <laughs> the wires? Yeah, the wires. I'll, mm -mm. I don't I, with all the with all the, uh, the the comets. asteroids, yeah, the asteroids oh, comets, yes. yeah, the, the asteroids or comet things. Of course, everybody uh, saw in uh, standard <laughs> vision because if they had 4K, they'd be able to tell that these guys have tremendous foreheads. foreheads yeah. <sighs> well, you, you know, maybe just, they all wore glasses talking, and, and bring them. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So funny. It was so much fun. <laughs> I like the little yeah. zippity doodah thing that on the front of the entrapolator or whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that you turn the with all the left. color. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, like yeah. Two 45 then, degrees to the left. Yeah. But then, yeah, this giant atom type yeah. thing. Or going the on the thing the yeah, I know. Oh, that must be science. That's, that's, that's science. That looks science. That's, that's science. <laughs> Fine. If you're a kid, that's science. No, exactly. I love it. It's it, it gets the message across, and they're building stuff. And I'm yeah. gonna build me one of them. Interpolate. It's like, it, <laughs> did you guys ever have uh, Heath kits? Uh -oh. I don't think it was so. A, it, it was a company that made sold electronic equipment kits. Mm. Mm -mm. Instead of instead of spending a whole bunch of money for something, you could buy a kit and build your own oh, shortwave okay. radio or your own. Uh, amplifier for your stereo or whatever. Um, that's what it reminded me of a really super giant, complicated. <laughs> uh, so here's the wires. Um, above the little, that, ship, little ship, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, above that, above the asteroid, there's like a mm -hmm. thing sticking up, and then there's a bar, mm -hmm. and there's two wires coming off yeah. it. And they said that, uh, towards the end of the end of uh of the uh, post-production stuff, they ran out of money and they started pushing them to cut stuff. So that's where you don't see those anywhere else, but that's in the end mm -hmm. when they're fleeing the planet mm -hmm. and they didn't bother taking the wires out. 
I, you'd think that they, when they did the Blu-ray, they'd take them out, but I, all they're doing is just trying to come up with a good picture. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to keep that in there now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and, no, 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 no. Like I said before, I think that's a great, I really, really liked that idea that that's how that these um, other aliens fought. I've never heard of that idea before. That they well, just figure out how to get the asteroids, and then they use the asteroids as weapons towards. And and they the came. Moon. Their planet used to be a comet. I'm like, what? How did that work? <laughs> I think that's what he said. I think then, so. Yeah. Then it turned into a sun. So hey, you know. But what was the name of the other the other race? Oh. The other was alien? it Zargon or Zargon? Zar Zargon or something? Yeah. Like that. We never really get a good look at them. There's no, a we don't. We don't see the people. Um, they had regular size foreheads. Oh, that's why <laughs> they, did. they did. Or maybe they had two. <laughs> or maybe they had really tiny foreheads. So, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I had to pull this one. A doc. Doc mentioned her. We only have. There's only one woman in the cast besides. Well, that's not true. There was a woman scientist, I guess. None of them could wear hats. Uh, but yeah, this one's. Uh, She's driving, right? She's they're doing driving. something no, important, she's, clearly. Yeah, she's doing the uh, the interrosseter. Yeah, the interos the thing that uh, made their pressures change. Ah. Uh, oh, okay. that's right. That's right. But I still say this is a water treatment plant. And all she's doing <laughs> is straining the solids out of the out of the water. She's yeah. turning, but the headpiece is awesome too. Yes, I was. was oh, so cool, but so straight. Why? Why? So stupid. <laughs> it's well, stupid it's cool. Foreheads, it's those right? foreheads, right? But <laughs> yeah. wow. <laughs> the helmet the even forehead. has that concave part in there. So, yeah. anyway. What are we going to do with all this corn? <laughs> corn? <laughs> what? <laughs> all right. All right. Water treatment um, plant. Ah. Well, I almost got to. Oh, it, so here's some here's some early oh, effects. Uh, so he's flying this uh, jet from DC to California, I guess, or wherever it is he's going. And turning that thing green, they said was not. He said now it'd be a piece of cake, but then you had to. Uh, it took a rotoscoping process, and you had to go in there and hand hand you know, do each, do a mat for each frame mm, mm, mm. Um, that that was in there. And I'm trying to think, he mentioned uh, a woman named Millie Weinbrenner and she was like the head rotoscoper. Mm. And uh, she had her crew of roto girls, he said. Roto girls. <laughs> uh, she's not listed in IMB anyway, so it's one of those jobs that just doesn't get... Uh, done. And by the way, the map paintings were Russell Lawson. Those were cool. Um, well, you can put elf. me in the booby hatch, too, because I saw the green. I thought the green was pretty cool. It was kind of cool, and it was, it was kind of well done. The one thing that wasn't really greatly done was the uh, couple shots where they had the blue screen, like when they were riding in that car, and they had just kind of glowing yeah. around their head, but I just took it to be. Yeah, they would be glowing. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's some metalunan effect, right? right. <laughs> That's a natural effect. Uh, so besides, ah, <laughs> oh, shoot, what else did I have on there? So I had the plane. Then this is when uh, Exeter blows up after they build the uh, Velociraptor or whatever it is. The Velociraptor. <laughs> uh, Tinkatronic. He explodes <laughs> it. He, he burns it up. Explode it real good. Yeah. He, he tried. Yeah. Well, he unplugs it, doesn't he? Unplug yeah. Right. <laughs> good old Cal runs over and unplugs it, and that blasts him across the room. Yeah. But he goes, step back. Step back. Step back further. Further? <laughs> More towards the door, Cal. Yeah. <laughs> and I like also liked how Cal inspected everything afterwards with like a flathead screwdriver. Like, yeah. hmm, interesting. What's happening here? <laughs> it was fun. And then, you know, who who makes a, you know, they try to escape. And uh, Dr. Steve Carlson, Russell Johnson, Dr. makes an Carlson. early departure. 
exactly. Yeah, he had a three hour. He had a three hour tour. He had tour to... exactly. <laughs> he sacrificed himself. You guys go out and hide under the lake. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, fly the down water. the hill, jump in the lake. Dumb movie decision number one thousand sixty five. <laughs> This thing is he could have just put a rock on the accelerator pedal and escaped with the other two. And I think that was a was that a Woody? It looked like it. Yeah, it it's a like cool it. car. Yeah, but I love their explosions. Are like mm -hmm. colorful. I don't know. They're putting like different elements mm -hmm. in there and stuff. Who was the other little guy that ran up and goes? It's looked, that was a like, German scientist guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Rick came out of nowhere. Hey, bye. Yeah. Yeah. Snail, yeah. snail. <laughs> pew pew. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was funny. I felt so bad for but, him. Like, but that, was Brock, that was that was Brock, right? Or Brock? Or him, yeah. he was shooting them all down. Oh yeah, he was having fun taking them Brock, out. Yeah, he was. Had a, Brock, had a whole yeah, not back. Brock, not Brett. Brock, Brett, Brett, Brett. What Brock? Brock. <laughs> so Brock the, wanted uh, to screw some people's brain, and he wanted to really. He didn't like the humans at all. <laughs> Brack was weird. He, he, wanted to, <laughs> he wanted to fry all their brains. Exactly. He, yeah, he, yeah, 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 yeah. Put them in the whatever they called that thing. And uh, yeah. What is what is the uh, brain no masher? Doctor Ruth. <laughs> Doctor Ruth. Dr. Scientific. Doctor Ruth. Oh my god, that is so awesome. <laughs> Doctor Ruth says <laughs> Dr. Ruth. something about. I don't know. There's a hundred jokes. There's a I don't know how good my brain is, but I want to keep it, you know, yeah, or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. I want to keep it. My brain. Man. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm cool. Herbert. I'm Herbert. <laughs> Janitor bug. Yeah. We don't know much of this about this thing at all, except it's uh, its blood is red. <laughs> Look at that. And it's mouth goes. So cute. Yeah. And it's just made to do menial tasks. Just well, like his people. But I, Sometimes there's poop yeah. on the outside uh -huh. of the toilet. <laughs> so, so these are like some of the different. <laughs> this is like uh, in different transfers. It, mm -hmm. it, it looked, and, Maybe and, I shouldn't uh, have had all that cough syrup. <laughs> somebody, somebody uh, one of the, uh, the commentators said that it was really meant to be dark like that. You know, uh -huh. to make it a little bit more mysterious and that when they you know when they do the blu-rays mm -hmm. and stuff they they think they're cleaning it all up but it's not really the way that it was meant to look but anyway well, what a great i think it looks now. good i think yeah. i think it looks good i love how the uh those veins go yes go from the eyeballs up to the brain it's yeah. just mm -hmm. makes no sense uh -huh. but it's cool you know? yeah mm -hmm. and he's got space pants on yes that's one of the cool things. You've got, got this. You got the shoulder pads and the space pants. And you got the space, space pants. pants. There he is. See, look, space pants. Yeah, go on. Coochie, coochie. <laughs> kitchy, kitchy, kitchy. Uh, well, at least the only reason he goes after is because she hers is the only tube that raises. But otherwise... yeah, they couldn't come up with. They tried to come up with uh, legs for the thing, and they finally gave up. And, and this was a budget thing again. Yeah, and just, just put them in just, some pants. I read pants. that too. I love it. Great though. I love well, this. Why space not? Pants. You know. Yeah. Everybody else is wearing pants. Why, Why not? can't yeah. the mutant wear pants? It's a mutant. You want to I didn't question it at all. Hanging out. You want a mutant tiny <laughs> hanging out? Me? <laughs> 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 yep, he's reaching into that tube to uh, get here. Now, I thought I had... I don't see it now. Shoot. It was arms, it man. Somehow. I, uh, I know. It's, it's like when he falls down... There's yeah, he just goes like chunk, chunk, <laughs> chunk. <laughs> but it's it's obviously there's some guy in there holding like the extra yeah, arms. Yeah. But it's a great great idea. It makes him look so insect like to have those mm -hmm. long long arms. Well, when he falls down and he and he, I don't know, he like burns up or something. I I didn't notice it at first, but the commentary is going watch his watch his right leg, and it's like he said. I think somebody off screen said, "Move your leg. You're off the you know that he had to fit into the mat." they did <laughs> for the burning body and his leg was sticking mm. out too far so all out of nowhere he's laying there and then his, his leg moves over like six inches <laughs> just kind of strange looking i didn't um, notice i didn't notice that either <laughs> i didn't either until they told me and then it's just obvious as hell right can't so, unsee it i okay um, so as a just real quick as a kid this part 
really freaked me out as a kid when you know when they're coming and you get that close up of them looking mm -hmm. into the tubes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was. Yeah, it was awesome. Well, and they you definitely it, felt that how 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 they were, you know, like couldn't they were uh, contained in there, and he was mm -hmm. right. You know, I just felt really dangerous and 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 and, the, and it was funny. It's like in they were slightly out of focus. Uh -huh, right. Yeah. So it looked it looked really weird and mean and. So, <laughs> and the pants. To, that, well, I'm gonna go to I got my tight pants on. <laughs> so back to the mutants. Oh, okay. Uh just because I don't know if you could see it here or not. Nah, you, you can't really see it here, but uh a guy named Regis Parton played the mutant and put that suit on. Mm-hmm. And they said that thing was so hot, it was so heavy, that... and it was so thick and so sweaty that <laughs> literally there's one shot where he's bending down there and they 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 tell you to look for it and you can tell what it is. There's like sweat dripping off his head into the eyeballs, and you can see it going oh. back and forth in his eyeballs. <laughs> there's a oh, little man. No. Well, they said they mutant were tears. In, mutant yeah. breaks they would take the eyes out oh. and then blow it with a uh, hair dryer. <laughs> oh my gosh. <clears throat> that is so rough. I, wow. Well, it, Those people I, are tough. They go through, yeah. <laughs> I guess he was wearing <laughs> sweatpants. Yes. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I mean, it's, the amount of work and, and uh, suffering that guy went through for yeah. almost, he wasn't credited. In the, on the, mm. They usually are, unfortunately. Uh, so. People well, who wear that. That's not right. That's just. I don't. I just like how the shoulder pads make. You know, they they bring the shoulders up like almost exactly. So they're right by his eyes, almost. They're by his eyes. I love it. So I guess he has no real peripheral thing going on here, unless his eyes can go. I used to think as a kid he was wearing a backpack. I could see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, especially well, in the of, lower one, you can see almost like it's, yeah, some sort of uh, uh, yeah. shell or something on the back there. Yeah. I kept asking my parents for one for school, and they didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I want a mutant you backpack. You know, a mutant backpack. I want a mutant backpack. <laughs> the thing that freaks me out of stuff like this is the the arm with three segments. That always yeah. just mm -hmm. looks unnatural if it's well done. All right, well... At least for me, a really cool thing was the saucer. Yeah. And I thought it was cool how it would turn to evade the asteroids mm -hmm. and stuff. I liked that. Yeah, yeah. I, I just Gravity this explanation. Was... Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. Sorry. Well, it, I, I started thinking about it because it seemed really stupid, but then I thought, eh, that's pretty much how Star Trek works, you know. <laughs> up is always up, down is always down. Doesn't matter which way you go. I mean, it's it's there is no up and down, is there? It's just out and in. <laughs> well, you're in standing space. on the floor, so the floor is down. But I mean, in space, in space, right? oh, without right, right, without right. it. In right? reality, right. yeah, they have this gravitational <laughs> fake stuff. But uh, I like the uh, the mats too. How they, I, I mm -hmm. just thought they did a really good job with that. Mm -hmm. Um. And then this, I thought this was cool too when they show the plane inside the. Mm -hmm. with yeah. The, yeah. With that so was another weird cool. green ball above it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, it, this got me when they dropped the plane out, you know, when they launched it. I thought mm -hmm. that was really well done because they went to mm -hmm. the effort of having like the plane drops out and the first thing it does is, is, uh, goes backwards a little bit and then picks up speed as it. Mm -hmm as a propeller and glides. I, I just thought that seemed really realistic mm -hmm. and that seemed like something they had to that was put a, a little extra effort yeah. in and mm -hmm. think about it. Yeah. 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 And then though, Oh no, <laughs> it does that out in space when they go through the, what do they call it? The thermal layer. Yeah. I think so. That's, yeah. This isn't the thermal layer. This is coming into earth. The dermal layer. Yeah. The, the dermal. <laughs> it burns. It burns a little bit. Well, so apparently they stuck this steel thing. This was really a steel metal thing. And they put it in like a, a, a 
a forge or induction or something and heated the sucker up until it was like red hot and then sprayed it with this oil stuff that it ignited. And then of course they had like fans blowing on it um, to make it look like I just, uh, mm -hmm. pretty simple, but it just looked cool. Mm -hmm. I can help it all the way down and make a big explosion. Huge. I couldn't help but think about all the people that saw that, UFO going into the water because like when they, there was a boat over here, there was like all these yeah. people on the water. <laughs> I was like, hmm, there'll be talk. I don't know if it's coincidence or not, but I just started watching a bunch of UFO UAP <laughs> shows on <laughs> Netflix that are kind of yeah. Anyway. I also like how they ended it right at the scene, like in the in the explosion, and then it was just the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah! Well, after you show him and her hugging on the plane, oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> because as a woman, <laughs> as a woman, <laughs> I gotta get a hug. I gotta get a hug. Yes. As Not a woman, you're gonna need the, some consoling, a woman lays a aren't you? On her man. <laughs> I like when Cal said, didn't he actually like just call out Exeter and say, you're lying. I know that you're yes, going to die does. or something yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah, no, you're you not noble bastard. You're lying, Exeter. Yeah. This is a shot of the uh, those tubes. Yeah, and I, I thought it, that was cool too. They actually go to skeletons, I think, at one mm -hmm. point. But yeah. it was kind of cool. Yeah. They were sort of showing like uh, musculature and mm -hmm. ligaments and stuff and part mm -hmm. of it. All because they were 25. going through the thermal layer or something. Dang it. 25 years after into working at the water treatment plant. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens. Yeah, it's what happens. They, dump, they yeah. dump me in the filtration yeah. tubes. Yeah, exactly. Right. With the no harm magnetic <laughs> hand grabbers. Why don't they just call it a hand magnet? Yeah, just I grab mean, the hand magnet. Yeah. <laughs> if it was a real, the, the polarities are reversed and just twist them all into just a bloody one. Yeah, different people were better at making it look like that <laughs> yeah. than others. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes, my hands. I forgot. They did do a good job of, you know, doing the little, yeah. doing the little pop to make yeah. it look like they got magnetized. Mm -hmm. oh, the yeah, poor guy. I that one. All right. Um. So I don't know. Um. These actors are pretty standard, especially uh, Rex Reason and Jeff Morrow were people that they thought were going to move up and never really uh, got there. Um, same with uh, Faith Demurg. She was a, mm -hmm. a uh, Howard Hughes, I don't know what you call her, protege or something. So she was part Creole hmm, from New Orleans. Um, she was in, I knew her from some noir stuff back in the day, and I, I'll I'll let other people look that up. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> nice. But anyway, I I love this movie. I had a great time with it. It was a lot of fun. I I loved it from the very beginning when they were leaving uh, Washington to see DC. It was all that standard ta -ta -ta, horns, the music, yeah. all very. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Washington DC. Then the stock the, footage. <laughs> yeah. Well, well she was in it. It came from beneath the sea too. An Atomic Man. Mm -hmm. Atomic Man. Yeah, I didn't say that right at all, did I? Um, no, you did. A bunch of westerns. <laughs> no, I, I didn't have the proper emphasis on it. And of course, oh, there's a half gun, will travel bonanza, Perry Mason, of course. Uh, Tons of Twilight Zone. I feel like a bunch of the actors were in Twilight Zone. Episodes are directed. This guy directed yeah. Yeah. Like four. Yeah, he directed mm -hmm. four of them, and he did mm -hmm. uh, about a half, no, ten episodes of Alfred Hitchcock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have, should. Uh, which yeah, Jeff has watched all of them. Talk about. <laughs> and I, yeah, I'm right. I remembered some I of the the Twilight Zone that. episodes they were talking about, and I remembered the one that Morrow was in. Um. Like with some astronauts, those were all really good. Well, oh, most Twilight okay. Zone yep. episodes were good. Yep. Something about Beaumont or 
Well, how much? I think I read a a Batman reference to the TV series, but gosh, I should have written it down. Dear Uncle George, three wives to me. Yeah. Um, these guys were all of these. I think were were fairly active in genre stuff. Not. To, Okay. Anything else? Anything we missed that we want to hit here? No. Anything anybody wants no, to say? That they... <laughs> oh, I, I, I do want to mention. Okay. So uh, there was actually a piece on uh, the Blu-ray about the music, which is interesting to to uh, learn all this stuff. So he said at Universal, if there was more than one person worked on the score, they didn't get listed unless they did at least 80% of the score. Hmm. And that Herman Stein was the universal, a universal staff composer. And he did like 75% of this and then got called off oh, no. uh, to do something else. So he didn't get, he's not listed. And all that list is a guy who actually, um, you know, it's like the director, I think. I forget I forget what they use for the title, but uh, and then Henry Mancini did some and Hans Salter did uh some of that last bit. But Stein, I believe, is the guy that did the uh creature from the Black Lagoon three note thing. We haven't, we haven't heard that at all. <laughs> we haven't heard that at all today. So um, so anyway, yeah, this guy was thought of as a very good composer and that the the, uh, the score for this was really good and he didn't even get credit. Mm. And then, the, you know, that's the way it is. All right. Are we done? We're done. Yes, so. Another Universal movie. Check. <laughs> yes. Universal Yay. time. Okay. So that means it's time for feedback. Letters. We've got well, your letters. So first off, I do have to make a comment. Because there's one more thing to mention about this film. Oh, Jack Arnold. We didn't Jack say anything Arnold. about that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he's listed all over the place as having come in and reshot all the metal mm -hmm. sequences. And uh, according to the commentary and then a bunch of other sources I look at, that just flat out isn't true. Hmm. And the, the guy doing the commentary said he had interviewed or talked to like 60 to 80 people uh, at Universal, and they all said, no, he didn't do anything. And when he told Jack Arnold that and asked him what he did, then Jack Arnold kind of sloughed it off and said, oh, I didn't, I didn't really do much of anything. So. Because when you read about it, it does make it, they even have like a little bit of a backstory. Like they had Arnold come in and do it because the other guy didn't have any science fiction background. And so. <laughs> so I'm going with that. That guy knew his stuff. And I, I'm, I apologize for not knowing his name. Um, I'll put it in the notes, I think. And uh, it, 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 he was really interesting. And he's one that mentioned like, uh, um, Millie Weinbrenner as the uh, the uh, woman that did the uh, the rotoscoping. Um, I would love to learn more about the rotoscoping girls because no, there's no, all no, these no. all these things that people do that you don't know anything about that happens. Yeah, and I think they films. list them. They probably list most of those people now, but back then mm -hmm. they didn't. They had all these rules. Uh, the other They're thing, about, women. well, as well, women, they would yeah. probably. <laughs> Um, oh. another thing is the music. Did you, you said a lot of people think that there is a theremin in this music and huh. there isn't. And that Steiner kind of thought the theremin was already getting overplayed. And he, he and an orchestrator named David Tampkin figured out how to use cellos and a vibraphone with wide vibrato vibramophone wide vibrato a vibraphone that the interference you know between them uh created sounds that that sounded kind of like theremin huh. 
Huh. And so if you listen to that when you're listening to it, you can hear it. There's kind of a, you know, theremin-like, but uh it's it's not so that's another one of those things i mean there's a there's a lot of stuff in this movie that they didn't have before and if you look at those special effects it was new new stuff or new ways of looking at the science fiction new ways to depict the planet so Yay. okay so first first piece of feedback was on the alligator people we had the uh dick smith dilemma mm-hmm. yes uh, where the credits said Dick Smith, the commentator on the Blu-ray said it's not the Dick Smith. Every place we looked on the internet seemed to think it was Dick Smith. Uh, so in the in a, a practical effects group on Facebook, I asked the question and got lots of replies. So Joe Nazaro said, no, it's a different Dick Smith, who I believe was based on the West Coast. The misinformation is often perpetuated by people who don't know any better. But having spent the better part of a decade recently, having written a biography of the Dick Smith, I can confirm that they're two different people. Hmm. Uh, Andy Andy Mauger Mauger said there was another makeup artist named Dick Smith who was a lab man at 20th 20th Century Fox, but IMD does give credit to the wrong person. And then David Spada the admin for the group said different Dick Smith also involved in the fly. If I remember hmm. correctly. Hmm. So. Well, that's cool that there's people who could straighten that out. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. So we are thank you. Knowledgeable listeners. And thank it's you. Thank the you. old crap that gets copied everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's our right. job to bring it to the public like you. <laughs> or Buffers, you can some. bring it to us if we say something. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> I would hope. All right. Then we have uh, a couple of comments on the alligator people, episode 161. The Mm. first one is Mikey Z. And I'm thinking Chad should read that one. Now, why would you think that? I just did. Mikey Z says, the alligator people, a.k.a. the Great Dick Smith Dilemma. Mm. Daphne called it right as a comfort movie. Jeff oh, and I nice. are on the same page about being pre-the lizard Marvel Spider-Man film. I always thought the lizard was inspired by this film. George McCready, great in Kubrick's Paths of Glory. This is one of my favorite roles essayed by Cheney. Beverly Garland is great as the female lead. Mm-hmm. The robed alligator people in transitions have been described by others as having urinals on their face. <laughs> the final. Oh, they were. They're like upside down urinals. <laughs> it was perplexing, to say the least. Mikey, Mikey. The final polligator costume needed a lot more work. Glad you guys got the items I sent. Chad, you got my voice down to a T. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Mikey. There. <laughs> Just needs to be more Arnold Stangian. Love, love you guys. Keep being classy. Thank, Thank you, Mikey. You're a peach. It's and a peach. then we have one from <laughs> Gregory Crosby. Daphne, you want to take that one? Sure. Um, the Alligator People is yet another one of those films I only knew through stills and books on horror cinema. And even in the stills, that full body makeup did not inspire me to seek it out. I did finally see it a few years ago, however. The most vivid impression it made on me was how Beverly Garland is truly giving her all throughout the subpar script. Drive-in Academy Award nomination, as Joe Bob would say. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Subpar script? I mean, we got gems like nasty, (laughs) dirty, slimy gators. I mean... I know. It takes all kinds. Um... Speaking of Garland, has the crew done not of this earth yet? I've long felt that's Corman's most eerie and atmospheric film before the post cycle. Also, please, please, please do monolith monsters. Yes. A truly truly odd 50s sci-fi pot boiler that I saw on TV as a kid and found surprisingly disturbing. Perhaps perhaps my first inkling of the eco-terror genre yet to come. Monolith monsters. I love oh that. yay! And and uh, actually, not of this earth too is pretty good. That's um, anyway. The it's cool. Yeah. 
All right. Thank you, Gregory. Thanks, Gregory. Uh, and finally, Doc. Ralph Gregory. Miller? Yeah. yeah. Ralph Miller. He, I like this one. Love it! <laughs> Thank you, Ralph. There's a sequel, Island of Lost Baggage. <laughs> so silly. So Ralph so Ralph's special effects guy, dad, right? Joe. I see what, what else can I use that alligator skin? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, and ignore these other ones. We already did those. They just got copied over. So okay. we did those last episode. All right. That's great. And I hope we get more comments. Uh, um, alligator people just came out public yesterday. Mm -hmm. If you were a Patreon patron, you would have gotten it like a week to two weeks earlier. And there are plenty of ways to stay in touch, so please send feedback to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com or leave it in comments on the Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel. We love comments. We really do. That's where we get to kind of feel like we're all family and friends, and uh, you can let us know yeah. what you think of the movies and what your experiences were. That's what's fun, yes. Yes. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, or correct us. Or make no, suggestions. Uh, not that so much. Just, just compliments, please. <laughs> all right, all right. Positron. Uh, yeah. Is, and if there's any mutants out there, you know, let us know mm -hmm. what, how we're supposed to be pronouncing this. Yes. What you want to be called. Uh, that's it for this episode. But every two weeks, we'll be focusing on a specific film released between 1920 and 1969. Next up is one chosen by Jeff. He has no idea what it's going to be. Oh, 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 it's a so, uh, you're going to be as surprised <laughs> as I am. I like it. That Deal was... with it. <laughs> that was harsh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie oh, of the man. classic era, as only decades of horror can do it. Say goodnight, guys. Good night, you deal guys. with it, more. Good night. <laughs> Gruesome Magazine.